Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP 2543 material selection and today I will be discussing on lab 5 which is materials and environment eco selection now the CES software have has a, uh, one of the function that we can do is we can uh, understand uh, how much uh, an effect of uh, our product or the materials that we want to use on the environment okay so what does this does is that we can understand uh, how how appropriate our uh, resources our uh, material or even our process to the environment what are the effects that we can have so that we can better uh, manage or uh, we can better understand the effect that it has on the environment so today I'll be talking about uh, how do we select the materials to minimize the embodied energy per unit capacity. Okay. Now um, the definition of the embodied energy is defined as the energy required to extract a kilogram of a material from its ores and feedstock. So uh, that is the by definition of the embodied energy. But energy, uh, but energy uh, in a broader scale, we can actually the in definition on energy or the process itself energy of uh, of even uh, of transporting so all those uh, have different uh, values that add to the to the to the carbon footprint of a product uh, of your of, of your uh, process in 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 the whole uh, the whole production process even so uh, at least the CS uh, EduPack software has that function that we can actually uh, understand actually uh, uh, see the effects of it okay on on, on our uh, on our selection itself okay so what we need is the CS the best software and the procedure is first we start okay uh, for this exercise we will look at the embodied energy uh, based on the amount of a kilogram of each material produced okay so we can understand how much uh, co2 or carbon dioxide footprint to acquire a kilogram of that material so we'll we'll first start with uh, level 2 in the database of cs edu pack then we choose edu level 2 with eco properties in the material universe then choose a graph uh, choose graph in selection stages and then for the y-axis we'll choose co2 footprint and with uh, primary production and for x-axis we choose the embodied energy primary production and then we click ok then we'll choose the family of amulets to easily identify the family of the materials and we can identify uh, polymers we need to identify polymers that have a carbon co2 footprint less than or uh, equivalent to 3 kilogram per kilogram and the lowest embodied energy per kilogram and then we can attach the resulting selection in result 1 and list the final material candidates in result 2 and rank them correctly from highest to lowest Young's modulus. Okay, so this we can use the tree limit and rank by function to easily identify the candidates. Okay, so we'll start the, so I already open up the CUS uh, data, uh, database. So we'll choose level 2. And then from here we'll choose subset with eco properties afterwards we just choose the select function and then we choose from the edu level 2 with eco properties and we choose the graph function next on the y-axis we'll choose the eco properties which is the material primary material production and we choose the CO2 primary production whereas for the x-axis okay we choose also the same primary material production energy and we choose the embodied energy primary production and we'll click okay so then we we'll move on to the family envelopes okay so we'll get something like this and once we already got this graph okay we need to identify polymer with the co2 of three kilogram per kilogram less than it less than so we can use the tree function okay and we'll just choose directly is polymer insert and choose okay 
so we already got from 100 materials we've eliminated 71 we'll have with uh, 29 and we choose the limit and the primary here okay so we want the maximum must be three kilogram which is either the same or lower so we'll just place here and apply and so we left with the with only this material so what it means is that these eight polymers okay these eight polymers have a maximum co2 carbon footprint in which that is just uh, three kilogram over a kilogram okay so meaning that one kilogram of for example here uh, natural rubber if we want to extract from uh, from the rubber tree okay with latex and everything uh, to the production and everything until you get a for example a bale or a standard size of about 3.3 uh, kilograms of natural rubber so you will require, you will uh, you will produce three kilogram of co2 the same goes to for example polyester so you will uh, produce three kilogram uh, worth of co2 per every one kilogram of uh, polyester that you produce so that's what it means okay it's either uh, uh, that is the maximum okay it can be lower if you just for example if you click a polyester here so you will see the property co2 so it's about 3.12 about 2.83 in the range okay so it still meets okay so so we already have all this information available to us so in the last uh, text of the uh, procedure it asks us to rank them correctly from highest to lowest Young's modulus so this part so how do we understand uh, how do we uh, know which uh, one of the materials uh, has uh, the highest to the lowest Young's modulus so we go back to the graph so initially we started with this graph of co2 footprint primary production meaning what this means is that this is the highest material that will produce uh, CO2 in its primary production okay, to extract, okay, to acquire a kilogram of it. And this part at the lower left hand here is the lowest uh, material, uh, lower CO2 footprint per kilogram of the material. But we don't know which, uh, and uh, since we already limited the, uh, the how much uh, co2 they want uh, to produce and what material specifically is polymer so now we are left with, with only this eight so how do we include the young's modulus okay so what we do is that we'll return back to stage one of the graph okay so we choose this option again i'm oh, sorry so we just right click and just edit the stage okay so for here we want to edit the y-axis okay so we just uh, choose advanced okay and we just uh, go before the uh, uh, setting the axis of co2 footprint okay so we choose young's modulus we insert here and we we'll put the sign of we want to divide meaning that with this equation we want we want to know which materials have uh, the highest possible young's modulus with the lowest possible co2 footprint okay so we'll have the the so that will come up with the information that we will receive okay so we just click okay okay and this is what we'll get okay which materials that have the highest young modulus versus with the lowest co2 footprint okay so any the with the with that ratio the lowest co2 and the highest young modulus will go with that ratio will go the highest on the top uh, left uh, but with the highest co2 footprint will go on the top right and the bottom right corner so from here we can rank the according to stage one which which has the highest 
ratio so we just click here okay so this part here this would have the uh, highest uh, excuse me uh, lowest ratio okay uh, we need with the the with the uh, with the lowest uh, ratio here so if we click here this it would have the highest ratio which is the uh, polyvinyl polyvinyl chloride okay which has a 0.856 of the ratio of the young smallest over co2 footprint which is the i'm sorry not this one the, yeah this one this material would have the highest ratio okay so that's how we uh how we uh, rank the material okay with that ratio so from there we completed the result one and result two okay so from here from this exercise, uh, from this first exercise okay we can take a look of the important energy and the co2 footprint of the material when we based on the amount of per one cubic meter of each material produced okay okay so okay so we've completed uh, the first part okay with this uh, part 1.2 and the 1.2 1.6 so we've uh, completed with result one and result two okay so next is so again uh, this and the body mode of energy is per how much we uh, how much carbon footprint that we need to uh, that will be produced when we apply one kilogram of material so how about volume okay certain materials regardless of it doesn't uh, necessarily uh, concern or the on the weight but certain materials like lighter materials even to get one kilogram for example like my polymers it's not really uh, it's not uh, uh, a fair or a reasonable uh, or normal term that they use to acquire uh, the material some uh, some materials are uses uses volume okay to measure the amount of uh, material that you need that you will produce so next we look on how uh, we we look on how uh, the embodied embodied energy and CO two footprint of materials when we base the amount of per one cubic meter of the of each material produced. Okay, this means that the amount of energy required to to acquire one cubic meter of material and also the CO two footprint of one cubic meter as opposed to previously what we did per kilogram. Okay, okay. So for the for this procedure. Okay, we still start with uh, level two database, and then we choose edu level two with equal properties in the material universe. Then we choose graph in the selection stages. For y axis, we'll choose CO2 footprint, and for x axis, we'll choose advanced and but embodied energy prime production. And then we could click insert and we'll set an equation which is an asterisk times the density. Okay, and then click OK and click OK again to finalize the equation. Then we'll next we click the family envelopes is identify identify the family of materials and then we we'll identify polymers that has CO2 footprint of less than or equal to three kilo, three kilogram per kilogram and the lowest embodied energy per cubic meter and we'll find the resulting material chart in result three and list the final material candidates in result four and rank them correctly from highest to lowest young modelist okay. So again, we have to use the tree limit and rank by function to identify the candidates. So we start again here. Okay, we can use a new graph. Okay, if you want to start with a new graph, okay, easily we can easily do that. Just delete, delete here, delete. Okay, so we chosen edu level two with equal properties. Okay, then we choose graph. Okay. For the y-axis, we choose again the CO2. Okay, and for the x-axis, okay, we we'll choose uh, advanced. We we'll choose the primary production. Okay, which is this, which is the embodied energy. Uh, the embodied energy. Yeah, sorry. This will be about the engine, and we will time with the mechanical properties. Oh, sorry, general properties of density. 
So what happens here is that since embodied energy, the formula is megajoule over kilogram, which is the kilogram of the material, and we times the density of the material, which is kilogram over cubic meter. So then we will get equivalent to the embodied energy of a primary production over one cubic meter. Okay, this is what happens. Okay, and we just click OK again, and we get this. And we get the, the envelope, so we get here. So what it means is that this is the highest uh, CO2 footprint, carbon O2 uh, footprint for the per kilogram of the material, which is the which is gold, and also it has the highest embodied energy per cubic meter. Okay. And here, uh, over on the lower left corner, is at limestone will have the lowest CO2 production per kilogram. At the same time, it has the lowest embodied energy per cubic meter of the production material. Okay, so again, now we choose for the uh, for polymer. So we just choose three, choose polymer, insert, click OK, and so we're left with. We're well, limited, limited at 71 of the total 100 materials. We are left with 21, 29 materials. And then we put in limit. Okay, so we only want materials that only produce not more than 3 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of the material. Click apply. So we're left again with the 8 materials here, 8 polymers. And so if we I uh, want to know what are the uh, the relationship with the Young's modulus. Again, we just choose the CO2, uh, the stage 1, at this stage here, and y-axis, and choose advance. Over here, we go to the for the value, then we choose mechanical properties, and we want the ratio between the Young's modulus over CO2. And again, we get the same uh, shape of graph. Okay, so then we just rank by the Young's modulus. This value will be starting with the lowest rank. So again, we'll get the highest rank, which is the same. Okay, but this, but for this graph, it shows the, the, uh, the, the equivalent of the, uh, with the, uh, against one cubic meter okay so if you look again with uh, if you compare with the uh, uh, per kilogram it will be different okay so even though we get only uh, same uh, answers but we'll have this the, a different shape of the of the graph so this is already we completed result uh, for result 3 which uh, we get the final material and also for result 4 when we rank it okay we should already rank it so before ranking it we get the uh, before we do the Young's models, we get them for the result tree. Okay, so we just we can just screenshot and then paste in the, the corresponding uh, uh, table. Okay, and then next, okay, with the, uh, the final exercise of the lab, which is the for chair. Okay, so a maker of polypropylene garden furniture, APP, is concerned that the competition is killing part of its market. By claiming that traditional material for garden furniture cast iron is much less energy and CO2 in is much less uh, energy and CO2 intensive than the PP. Okay, so meaning that uh, this uh, furniture maker is been doing uh, a poly using polymer, polypropylene, to make garden furniture. And his competition, uh, his or her competition, is claiming that they are making cast iron which has which uh, produces less energy and less uh, CO2 produced compared with PP. So how we can help the furniture maker by using the charts based on the you produce on results one to four. And if the PP chair lasts five, five years and the cast iron chair lasts twenty five years, does the conclusion change? Okay. So what are the procedures? So we start with level two in the database uh, of the database we choose. And then we choose edu level 2 with equal properties again in the material universe. And then we choose graph in select stages. Okay, for y axis, we choose CO2 footprint. Okay, 
and for x axis we choose the embodied energy per preparation and chemistry again then we follow up with the family envelopes as well as easily identify family materials and for three function we open metal alloy so we open ferrous and then we choose cast iron gray okay as a material and then we open polymers elastomers and open polymers and we choose open thermoplastic and later we select polypropylene and we click insert main and we just want to directly compare between the cast iron and also polypropylene so after that so we attach the resulting machine material selection chart in the provided result and make sure the highlight material is visible okay so again we'll start from here okay just uh, delete okay so we already chosen edu level 2 with equal properties we choose a graph and we choose primary material production for y axis we choose again the co2 okay and for x axis we choose the primary production the embodied energy per kilogram we just choose okay then we select the family envelope and okay from here we choose three metal ferrous cast iron third then minimize yes and then we choose polymer thermoplastic and then choose the insert and okay right so this will be cast iron and this will be polypropylene so if you look here even in the graph itself okay even in the graph itself you see that cast iron produces less energy to uh, uh, to produce one kilogram of this material when we compare with the with polypropylene at the same time okay it also produces less co2 per kilogram when we uh, if you want to produce one kilogram of cast iron uh, oh, sorry i use cast iron that time i think I think I can edit here stage I'm supposed to choose iron. great yeah yeah no. yeah it's the same position okay for cast iron gray and also produces less CO2 both uh, per kilogram and also produces less and uh, requires less energy if we want to extract one kilogram of the material okay so from this even if we click on the material itself and we look at its property uh, directly here we find that just iron the range of uh, energy requires is about 17 until 21 megajoule to produce one kilogram and also it only produces 1.65 until 1.75 uh, carbon co2 carbon dioxide footprint co2 per kilogram and if we click on polypropylene okay we'll see that the it has a higher energy uh, requirement and also a higher co2 production okay so so this is um so in in so when we're discussing it okay so when we're discussing it so we'll have the information in that if we compare just on the production to to manage to produce a kilogram of pp and a kilogram of uh, cast iron we understand that based on the information okay based on the database okay uh, that we currently have in the software we know that uh, PP requires more energy and requires more uh, and produces more CO2 when we compare with the uh, with the cast iron okay so so from there we attach into the into result 5 okay this okay, this uh, graph okay, we can paste it in result 5 okay 
No. For this part, okay. Okay, from the chart that we 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 found, okay, we show the comparison of the environmental impact, environmental impact of the two materials, okay. When trying to produce the same amount of material, okay. Let's say for example, uh, the chair, okay, just for uh, for uh, for uh, uh, a simple comparison, okay, the chair of PP and also uh, cast iron have the same uh, the same uh, volume okay because this, the design will be the same okay so but uh, the vo the the mass of it will be different okay even though it's the same volume but the mass will be different okay because PP have a different density compared to cast iron okay so now a typical PP chair weighs uh, polypropylene chair weighs about 1.6 kilogram and one made of cast iron weighs about 8.5 kilogram. But if the PP chair lasts five years and the cast iron chair lasts up to 25 years, okay, does this conclusion change? Okay, so uh, in the hint there, when you point your cursor to the label of either PP or cast iron, you can see the average value of each CO2 per November energy per cubic meter. Use the values to help with the weight of each chair when fabricated with the two materials with the discussion. So, now, since we have, uh, even though it's different materials, okay, different mass, okay, so we can change. We want to, we want to know, in terms of volume, okay, in terms of volume, it's the same volume. So what we can do is we, again, edit the stage of the graph, and we change the x-axis, okay, choosing advance, all right. And from here, we just multiply. Okay, we can uh, click on asterisk, and we choose the density, general properties of density. Click insert. Okay, so we'll get here. Now, the graph already changed. Okay, what this means is that this is the value of the embodied energy of primary production, meaning how much energy it requires. To produce, when we times to the density, you know, how much energy it requires to produce a cubic meter of the material. So, PP, okay, and then we have uh, cast iron gray. So, in terms of the CO2, again, still cast iron uh, require, uh, produces less CO2 when compared to PP, but when we compare with the, with the uh, volume, Okay, the volume of uh, in order to get a volume one cubic meter of cast iron, you require more energy compared to PP. Now with this information that we have, so if we, uh, for example, click on PP, okay, uh, sorry, uh, we just uh, put in here, okay. So here, so if I move, uh, I think I can. Uh, can zoom it. Okay, so if I move here, okay, so you, if you look at the lower left axis, okay, on the lower left axis, uh, uh, lower not the lower left axis, but on the lower left window, you see if I move a cursor, okay, you see the X and Y on the left, le uh, top uh, on the bottom left corner, is changing values, right? So if we uh, move directly on the material of polypropylene. You get a value about seven point, uh, on the x because we're concerned of the x value on the on the x axis. So you get here about seven point one four seven times ten to the power of four megajoule per cubic meter. Okay, that is the value. But if we move here, okay, we get about one point three seven seven three times to the power of 5 megajoule over cubic meter value okay for uh, for cast iron okay let me remove this a bit more confusing okay so now so how do you answer this so you have this is in terms of the same volume okay but you have different weight okay so you have different weight and furthermore Cast iron chest lasts longer, 
So how do you how do you weigh between which material is better? Is still PP uh, the better choice with its lightweight, okay, lower density, okay? Uh, even though we 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 sacrifice in terms of CO two production and also we we'll need uh, more energy to produce per kilogram. If you if you remember when we did before, I changed uh, the value of the x axis. Or does does uh, cast iron chair is much better? It, it, it lasts longer, but it's heavier, uh, and at the same time it, it gives lower uh, lower uh, CO two to produce and also lower energy that required to produce it. So which which uh, which uh, chair is uh, uh, the much uh, is is has in, uh, that have uh, uh, much lower uh, environmental impact? Okay. So this is what you need to come to conclusion. All the information is there. Every uh, is, is is even given uh, the weight. So even though with uh, with that weight, you will know that how much uh, if you if you if you change uh, uh, the x axis. Okay, this x axis is too. Uh, uh, and if you, if you remove the to multiply with the density, then you get again with the kilogram. So you, then you you can understand how much uh, kilogram of the people, how much energy that requires uh, versus the energy that requires per uh, weight of the for the mass of the of the cast iron. So you compare both, and if we compare between the 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 life lifetime of a PP chair compared with the cast iron chair, does it uh, does that uh, is it does it justify? Okay, the material usage with the uh, meaning that, for example, uh, you can imagine that the cast iron chair um, have a five time life cycle compared to uh, life uh, life uh, uh, compared to uh, PP chair. Meaning that you would need five polypropylene chair as opposed to just one cast iron chair. So does it uh, is it is it still uh, justified? Okay, for you to use that material, okay, does it justify for you to uh, uh, have that much impact, or, or does it does it justify the amount of energy that you require? Okay, so we're not talking about cost and everything. We're just talking based solely on the environmental impact. Okay, so if you put in mind that is that probably the company that's making the PP chair is not concerning about the cost, but but concerning on the image of the of the of the company. Okay. Whether it wants to be more uh, environmentally friendly, okay. Even though, uh, 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 even though, uh, if we talk about uh, in the in the last uh, maybe two decades, okay, there was not much. Uh, there was there were discussion on 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 the concern of environmental impact, but as we go through now, uh, now 20, two decades later, now it's more not only about. Uh, um, CO2, uh, but also on how sustainable uh, the process or the materials, uh, material or the or, or the product itself. Okay, on and the uh, uh, industries are talking about a closed loop uh, process, uh, product process of production. Meaning that the materials uh, can it be used again after its life uh, end of life cycle. Okay, so all these uh, concern. Okay, and with the effect that we've uh, we've seen. Uh, the past uh, two decades now, the, the uh, what effect of the climate change uh, that's been taken on uh, on, the, on 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 the whole world. Uh, on we get uh, the severe drought, it even worse uh, floods that in that is affecting us. So um, so this is we, so we're not talking about uh, cost itself, but in the long run, okay, some companies have really want to shift with much uh, uh, with a much uh, better. Uh, environmental uh, process uh, that has less impact okay even though uh, it'll be co uh, it'll be costlier now but in the long run it could be uh, in the long it, it could be much uh, you're actually uh, saving uh, money or making more uh, profit as, a, as compared to uh, as compared to what you did with your previous product for example okay so from there uh, I want you to uh, uh, and uh, try to uh, how you can uh, try to uh, understand okay what are the uh, 
ways that uh, when you come to conclusion uh, whether the PP check is is justified is better compared to the cast iron or the cast iron is much better so from there you need to discuss and place on your answer okay place your answer here and you can and you can also um, attach the graph or if you want to put in you can also add in calculations okay uh, based on how much uh, co2 or how much uh, uh, energy uh, megajoule uh, body energy that requires to produce okay the the the, the amount of vol the volume okay so uh, so that's all okay for uh, for our final uh, lab okay so i hope uh, you uh, gain okay some uh, more understanding on on how we can use uh, CS, uh, the C S the C S impact uh, software uh, on coming to conclusions. Uh, this so as I'm, as I told uh, as I talked uh, uh, just uh, a while ago. Okay, we're not talking about cost here. So we're just solely talking on the effect of how much CO two is produced and also uh, how much energy requires to produce uh, that material. Okay, just solely based on that, not talking about cost and everything. How we come to the conclusion of which materials are better. Okay, in terms of uh, into its effect on the environment. Okay, so uh, on my part, that is all. Thank you very much for your uh, for your attention. Okay, and for the view of uh, of the of our of my recording today. So you you have about a week to complete this exercise. Okay, so I hope you uh, you enjoy and also you uh, gain uh, uh, knowledge on on how to use the software to help later with your understanding of the features in the, in the CS software. So thank you very much. So if you have any questions, you can leave a comment on the, on the video. Like and subscribe if you have it. And also, uh, if you have any questions, you can text me in our group, okay, in any or in, or in any medium, okay, you can use even. So I'll see you in, the, in our next session. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum and have a great day.